Erdogan wins. But Erdogan it's... must be feeling pretty invincible right now after winning yet another election. However, he won't be for long because he's really pushed Turkey's economy to the brink to pull off this win. So now as the Lira nosedives and his unorthodox mix of solutions is starting to crumble, the Turkish economy is rapidly nearing its breaking point. Just to illustrate. The thing is, I don't even understand. Like, I mean, he is... He has strangled the Turkish lira, okay? However, and, and you can't do that unless you're America. You can't just, like, a lot of other countries think that they could just, like, print as much money as they want at, without any sort of, like, uh, you know, financial feedback, okay? Uh, but it doesn't work that way because, you know, only America gets to do uh, some version of uh, modern monetary theory, which they're not really doing, but, like, they could do, you know what I mean? Because America is the world's bank. When Turkey does it, especially if you are, uh, especially if you're uh, sometimes in opposition to the United States, like your your currency is going to get hyper devalued. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, considering that uh, your economy is pegged to the dollar, your everything is going to become more and more expensive, even though your currency is devalued. However, because of uh, the way that that uh, Turkey presents itself in the global marketplace, you don't even get the, uh, you don't even necessarily get the influx of, of foreign capital into Turkey um, that would then come in, okay, that would then come in and uh, uh, basically like purchase everything uh, for pennies on the dollar because at least, you know, back when I used to cover this kind of stuff, I mean, when I even worked uh, many, many years ago at, at uh, Habertürk, Bloomberg Habertürk, many, many years ago, one thing that uh, foreign capital always, uh, uh, the perspective that foreign capital always had about Turkish, the, the Turkish economy is that it is incredibly corrupt. And there's a lot of truth to that, which is why, which is why people don't want to, uh, which is why people don't want to do a lot of investment in Turkey. So, that's another reason why uh, the, the economy doesn't even recover and doesn't even see the supposed quote-unquote benefits that you would possibly get from um, your, your devalued currency. How little time the country has left, the Financial Times has reported that in the six weeks leading up to the first election round, Turkey's central bank lost roughly 15% of its foreign exchange reserves in an effort to prevent the lira from falling faster than it already did. So the market participants are now increasingly betting on an imminent default of the Turkish government. And this means that Turkey could soon join countries like Lebanon, Sri Lanka and Argentina to become the latest economic basket case. But why now? Why is Turkey's economy now reaching a breaking point after it held out so much longer than many analysts predicted? And is there any way that it can still be saved? To answer these questions, let's first do a quick recap of the two big problems that have been plaguing the Turkish economy. For years now, while the Turkish economy grew at an impressive pace, its currency, the lira, kept falling, contributing to sky-high inflation in Turkey as imports kept getting more expensive. Luckily, economists and the Turkish government largely agreed on the two big problems, leading to the lira's rapid decline. We'll dive into those two details after I tell you all about the sponsor of today's video, The Daily Upside. As anyone who spends time consuming financial content is well aware, Holy fuck, that's a that long ass the Lira's rapid decline. The first problem was a massive trade deficit, meaning that for years, Turks have been importing more than they export. This has consistently put pressure on the Turkish Lira. After all, to buy foreign goods, you need foreign currency. And so on average, for import-focused Turkey, there was a lot more demand for foreign currency than for the Turkish Lira. The second problem was rapid dollarization, meaning that in essence, a small dollar-based economy grew inside Turkey that was getting bigger and bigger as Turks increasingly felt that their own currency was losing its value too. This is precisely the reason why I said, is that true? Yes. This is literally the reason why it doesn't matter like when... This is why it's, it's significantly more devastating uh, when, uh, when, when the dollar, uh, the, the uh, price of a dollar, it, it becomes more powerful in comparison to the Turkish lira because the entire fucking economy operates on, on the dollar all of a sudden. 
fast. Ironically, this made the lira fall even more as Turks increasingly sold their liras so that they could save in dollars, euros or gold. But while well, economists and the Turkish government basically agreed on these two problems, they didn't agree on a solution. You see, the standard way that economists recommend that you deal with a currency that is falling too fast is to raise interest rates. This will simultaneously discourage banks from lending into... Dude, listen, I know that uh, Turkey is, in, is on like... Turkey is a very interesting country when it comes to its foreign policy. Like they're part of NATO, but they also are like always collaborating with the Russian government and they have a much more... Um, much more neutral stance towards Russia. However, however, what would be truly interesting and kind of awesome is if they had a more collaborative relationship with China. Now, I don't know if they uh, will do that. I, I'm not entirely familiar with like Chinese-Turkish relations. Um, I know that like Erdogan talks about the Uyghur uh, Turks regularly because he's like, they're Turks, they're Turkic, there are people, but uh, I don't know how... You know, I don't know how much he cares about that, ultimately. Um, I have heard him talk about it before. He doesn't. He ignores it. Uyghurları götüne takmıyor. Okay, well, I he never talked about Uyghurs? No, no, he... They see it as... um, They see they see Uyghur Turks as like... Uh, I mean, there, there are literally uh, Uyghur Turks in fucking Syria. What are you talking about? The Turkish military trains some of the, some of the Uyghurs. 100%. They used to. I don't know if they still do. But if you think that they don't, you're wrong. They train him in collaboration with the American government as well. What, what the uh, Erdogan government says versus what they do is two entirely different things. You have to remember that. He ignores it in Swiss under the rug for the most part. Okay, well, I don't know how, what their relationship is going to be with China, but that could be one uh, avenue of, of uh, some kind of economic revival, potentially. To an economy that is running too hot, decreasing inflation. And it will also make the currency more attractive for both foreign investors as well as local Turks by offering a higher return. However, Turkey's president Erdogan famously hates high interest rates, be it for religious reasons, saying stuff like this at his rallies. Onların dolarları varsa... <laughs> or some say that he believes in a highly un. Ulan, Allah ne yapacak? Ekmeğin fiyatı hala, ekmeğin fiyatı hala neyse ne yani? O istediği kadar, istediği kadar Allah ekber de olmaz yani. Ekmek hala 5 lira, 10 lira. Oh no, that's crazy. He said. The notion of like being anti-usury because you're uh, Muslim is pretty funny. Uh, Islam does uh, consider usury to be a sin. So does Christianity, technically. Um, out of the Abrahamic religions, the only one that uh, doesn't consider usury to be a sin is Judaism. However, it doesn't really matter. Everybody loves interests. Uh, everybody loves interests. Everybody loves uh, debt. Uh, it's fucking ridiculous to, to claim that like he has any kind of like uh, religious purpose behind it. I don't think that's the reason. Orthodox economic theory that predicts that interest rates that are high actually cause higher inflation. But whichever it is, he often ordered the central bank to lower interest rates precisely when standard economic theory would advise that you raise them. And this is why economists have long been predicting the collapse of the lira. However, as I discussed on this channel at the end of 2022, this did not lead to the collapse of the lira at the time because Erdogan's government was tackling the lira's fall using some highly unorthodox solutions. First, Turkey's central bank sold off a lot of its foreign exchange reserves to prop up the lira, and then when it basically ran out, it convinced former geopolitical rivals in the area to lend it foreign exchange reserves in exchange for political favors so that it could keep propping up the lira. Second, to counter dollarization, it started its so-called lirarization strategy. Now, in effect, this meant that Turks, which had foreign currency, could open a special deposit account for which the government would compensate them with more liras if the lira fell so much that the owner would have been better off keeping the dollars. And actually, this worked for a while, halting dollarization, stabilizing the lira, and this gave the Turkish government some time to tackle its other big problem, its trade deficit. 
However, despite some successes like opening a massive new gas field in the Black Sea, Turkey's trade deficit got wider than ever before. Now, the most likely explanation for this is that throughout 2023, Erdogan encouraged the Turkish banks to extend more and more credit, and this new money in Turkish hands was spent buying more stuff in Turkey, increasing inflation, and it was also spent outside of Turkey, driving the value of the lira lower. And so, after some relative stability, the lira continued its fall, and this now means that Turkey's economy is nearing a breaking point. You see, the fall of the lira is now undermining both of Erdogan's unorthodox solutions. First, while the Gulf states have been willing to support the lira in exchange for political influence, its continued slide is making it riskier and riskier for them to keep lending dollars to Turkey because of the decreased chance that Turkey can pay them back. And as we've seen with Pakistan recently, while Gulf states have deep pockets, they are not prepared to back countries indefinitely. Second, while Erdogan's lira deposit scheme was a big success, it was also rather risky. You see, if it worked in stabilizing the lira, it wouldn't cost the Turkish government anything. After all, they only need to pay out extra compensation if the lira loses value. But now that the lira keeps sliding, the Turkish state will have to pay these deposit holders a lot of extra liras, which could force it to start printing them, which could further devalue the currency. In other words, Erdogan's innovative but risky liraization strategy could now lead to a doom loop of paying deposit holders with newly printed currency, which devalues the lira, and so on. But will it? Or can Erdogan save the lira once more? Well, that is highly uncertain. So, as I often do on this channel, I shall present you with three scenarios and give them all a likelihood. The first scenario is another Turkish miracle. In this scenario, the Turkish government convinces Arab backers to give them once again more money. At the same time, having won the election, the newly elected government now takes steps to cool down bank lending in the country, which combined with rising gas production reduces domestic inflation and turns Turkey's trade deficit into a surplus. This will eventually halt the fall of the lira and increases the chances that its liberalization policy is also a success. Sadly, I don't think this scenario is very likely and give it a 15% likelihood uh, since the Turkish central bank is running out of reserves so fast. Just to get an idea of how fast while Turkey secured almost $20 billion loans from Arab states last year, it just burnt through $17 billion in reserves in the six weeks just before the election. The next two scenarios are therefore breaking gönderin, point gönderin, However, they şarkı. play out very differently. In the second scenario, Erdogan once again surprises Send me a friend and of him, uh, and singing. returns to economic orthodoxy. In this scenario, the central bank will raise interest rates and the government will get an IMF loan. To appease them, however, it will introduce austerity measures. This will lead to a painful a economic recession, which will you eventually can't, stop. You can't send me links unless you're subscribed, though. Hey everyone, it's me, the editor again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please throw some Kaya loves in the comments and it's always nice to know when people reach the segment. To get more Asan content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hey, leave a like while you're at it. And if you'd like to see another video just like this one, why not check this one out?